Devices like this could be a smart, low-cost way to ferry people and packages around town. Imagine air jelly taxis or air ray couriers dotting the skyline. And they can be made more cost effective by taking another tip from the world around us. We use swarming behavior and swarming behavior means that they are very efficient and reduce the fuel consumption or the energy consumption. Lessons from nature that could lead to lighter, more efficient, more affordable aircraft. In the future, it will be much easier for everybody to fly. Flying will be easier because planes will someday have adaptable wings and bodies that will give them the agility of a bird. We have developed technologies for the first time in the world where the airplane wing can change its shape as needed. What if planes were not rigid? What if their wings and tails could instinctively change shape responding and maneuvering like a bird. Next Gen Aeronautics envisions next generation smart planes that can reinvent themselves as they streak through the clouds. The future of flight is morphine technology. The future of flight is cognitive aircraft. The future of flight is to infuse enormous amount of intelligence into the airplane. Birds are smart enough to adapt their shape to weather and air currents for gliding, climbing, diving, hovering. Planes will too. One minute it could have a large aspect ratio, flying at a high altitude. Then it could tuck its wing in, changes, reduces aspect ratio, dive down. This kind of efficiency will create versatile, flexible planes. One airplane that could do three or four different missions that certain airplanes right now could only do one mission. Imagine a jumbo jet hovering like a helicopter or a cargo plane moving like a jet fighter. But are flexible planes possible? Nobody believed we could build a skin, which is not like aluminum. The innovation came in the way we supported it underneath it so that it doesn't collapse or it doesn't wrinkle too much. But these future high-tech planes will have skins made from surprisingly low-tech material, rubber. It stretches up to over 600%. We actually use that rubber to attach to substructure. That structure can handle the air pressure exerted on the wing and the forces that an airplane sees during flight. It could be bending, twisting, flexing, vibrating. All of it is captured by the sensors in real time at a very high data rate and communicated to the central computer. Sensors stretched across the plane provide the feedback for decisions. The strain arrays give the aircraft computer a better indication of the exact state of the airframe so the airplane can fly closer to its structural limits as in it can fly harder, faster. It makes decision on whether something is wrong and how critical it is and what to do about it. So it not only monitors the health, it manages itself. And that will lead to intelligent planes that fly faster, use less fuel and are more versatile. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of this kind of adaptable, autonomous, aware, intelligent technologies. And in the future, we'll experience a whole new universe of aircraft designed to take us out of this world. They'll float around, they'll look out of the massive big windows, they'll become astronauts, they'll have one hell of a rush as they head off into space. The future promises a return to the magic and luxury of flying and experiences that are truly out of this world. Get ready to be weightless. Get ready to leave Earth. The beauty of space is enormous and man's natural instinct is to explore. Billionaire Sir Richard Branson is expanding his air empire with Virgin Galactic said to become the first commercial enterprise to take tourists into space. I remember uh, as a teenager just dreaming of one day being able to go into space myself and really then waiting for NASA to develop spaceships that would enable you and me to be able to go into space. Anyway, it never happened, so in the end I decided, you know, maybe I need to build my own spaceship. 
Branson wants as many people as possible to see the Earth from space, to appreciate just how unique it is, and to enjoy the ride of their lives. They'll be taken up 60,000 feet by the mothership. They'll then go two and a half thousand miles an hour in 10 seconds. They'll have one hell of a rush as they head off into space. They'll become astronauts. His team believes the venture will help develop environmentally friendly energy sources, as well as far lighter air vehicles. Our new White Knight 2 mothership for Virgin Galactic will actually be able to carry nearly 14 tons of weight underneath it. It'll do that with about the efficiency of a large American SUV truck. Virgin Galactic President Will Whitehorn sees the company becoming the space truckers of the future. The mothership could bring down the cost of ferrying satellites, carry commercial operations into space, and even help to clean the planet by moving ventures like computer server farms beyond the atmosphere. If we could take all the ground infrastructure of IT and put server farms in space instead, solar powered, we'd take out one of the biggest causes now of CO2 going into the atmosphere. With space, the final frontier for tourism, Branson won't be the only one offering passenger flights to the heavens. This space plane will allow any one of us to do what humanity has always done since the beginning, that is to go farer, to discover new things. Hugues Lepore Vuvuda heads the Astrium space plane project for the European Aeronautic Defense and Space Company. While Virgin Galactic uses a mothership to carry a spacecraft aloft, the Astrium spacecraft streaks skyward right from Mother Earth. They will first have the launch experience with the rocket engine boosting them to space. Then, after this big acceleration, they will be able to float in the white cabin here. And while you're floating, you'll also get a new perspective. You're actually in space, looking back at the Earth, because that's kind of what it's all about, seeing the Earth as a, a sort of an independent body. You've experienced something really, really, really special. Adventures in space during the early years will be limited to minutes. The space plane's forward-looking designer, Mark Newson, envisions a future where flights like these will be used to radically reduce international travel time. The way that we're going to get from London to Sydney in a matter of three or four hours is going up to 100 kilometers high and then coming back down. It's a new way of traveling, offering all of us an opportunity to experience our universe in a way very few have seen it. Just to go into space, at least for a few minutes, this has got to be one of the coolest things in the world. In fact, to me, it doesn't really matter how long you go. The fact that you've just gone there at all is just a completely mind-boggling concept. But we won't only fly above our own planet. The future will find planes carrying us on explorations of distant worlds in our solar system and beyond. We are proposing a robotic, rocket-powered airplane that flies about a mile above the surface and travels for thousands of miles. This is Ares, designed to make the first powered flight through the atmosphere of another planet. Joel Levine of NASA's Langley Research Center sees this aircraft first flying on Mars, literally sniffing out signs of life. Ares will measure gases that are only produced by living systems. We can then tell the next rover or eventually human explorers where to look for the most likely place to find living systems. While the plane's early flights will be as a scout, it's eventually envisioned as a passenger craft. But taking a plane to another planet has its challenges, since an airplane has to have an atmosphere in order to fly. We developed Ares with a large wing surface area and an airfoil with a curvature that would give us the lift in a very rarefied atmosphere. Because of that thin atmosphere, flight testing is also a challenge. Ares has undergone extensive wind tunnel tests to perfect its aerodynamics. And a model has been put through maneuvers at dizzying heights. We used actual flight tests in the Earth's atmosphere above 125,000 feet, which simulates the pressure and density of the atmosphere where we'll be flying. 
Ares will then be tucked into an aero shell for its half-year flight and its dramatic descent. As it enters the atmosphere, the airplane unfolds and the rocket engine begins and it begins its flight through the atmosphere of Mars. And when it finally gets to the planet's surface, we'll all be along for the historic ride. We have a video camera in the tail of the plane, and as we fly through the atmosphere of Mars, we'll transmit this journey, this exciting journey back to Earth all over the planet. The future is the place where your imagination will take flight because you'll pilot your own plane along a sky highway, cruise in luxury on ocean liners in the air, enjoy the speed and thrills of sport flying and rocket racing, fly planes that change shape in midair, never have another layover or delay, and blast off beyond the limits of Earth. Prepare for takeoff.